Standing on a podium by itself, we have one of Fisk and Nielsen's first vacuum cleaners. It's not actually number one, but that's what the company's very first domestic vacuum cleaner looked like. Fisker had initially experimented with a water filter. This proved to be a really bad idea, because the water would leak out during vacuuming. This was obviously unacceptable, so it was back to the drawing board. However, Fisker succeeded in producing a workable vacuum cleaner, and this is the one we have on the podium. It can be started by pressing the red button, and there are two operating speeds. This had the happy advantage of enabling people to vacuum their curtains without the risk of having them swallowed. Fisker now patented his vacuum cleaner. For some reason or other, unbeknown to me, he did so in his own name, and not in the name of the firm. And, of course, the firm consisted of two partners, Fisker and Nielsen. Whatever Fisker's motive, Nielsen was unhappy. First of all, he thought they should concentrate on making motors instead of dabbling with all sorts of other things. He was also somewhat sceptical about the patent not being taken out in the name of the company. The upshot was that Fisker bought out Nielsen's stake in the business. Nielsen went on to experiment with motors himself. He even tried his hand at vacuum cleaners and produced the Vampa, the neat wooden box to be seen in a large display case along the side wall. He would very soon abandon vacuum cleaners, however, to pursue his first love, motors. He started an electric motor factory in Copenhagen, but then drifts out of the picture as far as our story is concerned. At market launch, Fisker's first domestic vacuum cleaner cost 380 kroner. To put this into perspective, this was the same as a housemaid earned in a year. So it was not cheap. In fact, this was to become a characteristic of the company's vacuum cleaners over the years. They were certainly never cheap. But that first vacuum cleaner, the number one, weighed in at 17.5 kilos when empty. So it was a quality product. Notwithstanding Nielsen's exit, the firm was to continue under the name of Fisker & Nielsen. Initially, this was mainly because a vast amount of company stationery had been printed, and that would have to be used up first. And then, somehow, the name just never got changed. In fact, the company retained the name Fisker & Nielsen right up until 1989. In 1989, Danish entrepreneur and businessman Klaus Rysker Petersen discovered that the company had very considerable funds tied up in bonds, and this money was sitting there doing nothing. This fired his interest, and he started buying his way into the firm. But people began taking note. Business journalists, economists, and bankers all began wondering what was going on. After all, normally nothing ever happened at Fisker Nielsen. Ultimately, in 1989, Fisker and Nielsen was acquired by NKT and renamed Nilfisk.